Good morning and welcome to this service of worship. Thank you for making worship a priority in your life today and it's good to be together with you in the house of the Lord. If you will, please uh, take your attendance pads and be sure to sign those and pass them down the pew so we'll have a record of your attendance with us today. Uh, I'll lift up a few quick announcements while you do that. Uh, we, this afternoon, we have a women's prayer event, and that starts at 2 o'clock in Stockwell Hall. Uh, 2 o'clock, not 3 o'clock. It says 3 o'clock in the bulletin. We forgot to roll the bulletin back like the clock, I guess. But uh, it's 2 o'clock today, 2 o'clock in Stockwell Hall for the women's prayer bead event, 2 to 4 this afternoon in Stockwell Hall. Then at 4 o'clock today, we have a concert here in the sanctuary. It's free to everybody, so I hope you'll plan to come back for a great concert, musical concert this afternoon at 4 right here in the sanctuary. Um, remember that uh, coming up Sunday, November the 19th is our annual Commitment Sunday. Hopefully you got a packet in the mail reminding you of our stewardship campaign. Our theme this year is Making Ministry Happen. And so we want to celebrate all the ways that our giving enables ministry to happen. So our Commitment Sunday is Sunday, November the 19th. This past Wednesday night, I did do a financial update, update at Wednesday night supper, and we recorded that. So this week, we're going to send out a link to that recording. We'll send it to your email. So if you weren't able to be there last Wednesday night, I invite you to watch that. It's about 45 minutes, and it should give you lots of information. I just wanted to be transparent and to share with you how our budget is broken down and what your giving goes toward. So uh, I hope you'll check that out when that link comes to you this week in your email. Today is also uh, Georgia Retired Educators Day, and so we praise God for all of our retired educators, and we thank you for all that you've done, and we're grateful for you. So let's give a hand to all of our retired educators. <laughs> and of course, today in the life of our church is a very holy and sacred day, as this is All Saints Sunday. So we will be remembering those in our church family who have gone on to the church triumphant. We'll be reading those names in just a little while. But as we begin our service of worship, we have a banner with those names listed. And so the banner will come into worship now. And I invite you to be in a time of silence as the bells ring, reminding us of the saints who have gone on to glory. Let's have a moment of silence now. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we welcome your Holy Spirit into this place. Be with us today to draw our attention upward toward you. Lord Jesus, I pray that everything that we do and say and sing from this point forward would give honor and glory to you. We thank you, we praise you, and we lift this prayer as always in your holy and precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to number 711. Number 711 for all the saints, and you're invited to stand as we sing together.
Please join with me as we profess our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. And now we come to this very sacred time in the life of our church family where I will read this, this list of names. Uh, these are the church members who have died in the last year. And so each, after I read each name, you'll hear a bell chime and then a rose will be placed in the urn in memory of that loved one. And after I've read all of the names, when we get to the end, I'll ask also for other names that are on our hearts and minds. I know there are many others that we think about on a day like today, others who have gone on before us in years past. And so we will acknowledge those that are on our hearts and minds also, and we'll hear one more bell ring at the very end. And then I'll close out in prayer, and we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. These names are listed on the front of your bulletin if you'd like to follow along, but I invite you to simply be in a spirit of reverence and prayer as we remember these, our church members who have gone on before us. John C. Bross. Margaret Peggy Hester Ledford. Allison Harris Hightower. Jean Floyd Cunningham. Lacey Margaret Flynn. Joan C. Green. Ruth Ann Robinson Edge. Sally Ball Buck. James Taylor Coppage. Elizabeth Hassel. Charles Edward Clark, Sr. Nancy Vaughn.
Carolyn Elaine Gamble. Homer Lee Walker. Curtis Ann Sims. Janice Herring Eberhardt. John Walter Jack Thomas. Judy Low Boyce. Ann Brinson Ward. Joyce Staley Bradley. Reginald M. Warner, Jr. Ann Bogart Porter. Michael Joseph Cato, Sr. And for all of those who are on our hearts and minds this morning, we give thanks to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, when we come to this time in the life of our church every year, it is so overwhelming when we see the list of names. It's overwhelming when we stop and think of all those loved ones that we have lost. And Lord, we are eternally grateful that although it is overwhelming to us, that you are ever present, that you are keenly aware of each loss, that you are keenly aware of each soul, and we are eternally grateful that your word promises us that for those who have called on your name, you have prepared a place specifically for them. And so, Lord, we commit each one named here today to your loving care. Those that we have read the names this morning and those that remain on our hearts and minds today, we lift them up to you and we pray, Lord Jesus, that they are now in your loving arms. We thank you for each one who was a part of this church family We thank you for the laughter and the fellowship that they shared here in these halls. We thank you for the tears that they shed and for the worship that they lifted up to you. We thank you for all the ways that each one sought to serve you through the life of this church or whatever church they were a part of. And Lord, we are so grateful that we could have known them and loved them and walked beside them. And God, as we gather here this morning, we are so keenly aware of two other tragic deaths in the life of our community this weekend. We lift up the Wade family to you, Lord, in the tragic death of this young mother, young wife, so vibrant, so giving of her time and her talents to this community and to her church and to her family. Lord, we lift that family up to you, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would bind them together, that you would give them strength 
that you would give them comfort and peace, that you would shine a light in their darkness. And under very different circumstances, God, we lift up the family of First Baptist in Smith Station as their pastor has also died. Lord, comfort that church family and give them strength. And Lord, if there is a way that we as a church family can surround them, support them, strengthen them, encourage them, show us how we might be the body of Christ for them as they grieve and as they reel in this untimely and tragic death. God, we know that you're aware of every situation. You're aware of our deepest needs. You're aware of those that are on our hearts and minds today, of those that we have lost in years past, but we still grieve in these moments. We lift all of these prayers up to you, and we praise you that you hear our prayers. And now, Lord, hear us as we join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. invite the children now to come and join Miss Nicole Maine for a children's moment. Good morning. You want to come up? I know we have children here. Good. Thank you, sweet Reese. Yay, come on, have a seat up here. Hey, Serenity. Good morning. Parents, I will remind you as any the rest are coming up that um, choir practice starts again, not this afternoon, but next Sunday. So we'd love to have your children come sing in the choir. Today is a special Sunday. You heard the ringing of the bell and the reading of names. Hi, sweetheart. Have a seat. You could just crisscross applesauce right there. Or you can sit next to Bubba on the stairs. Where do you want to sit? Good job. Good job. Today is a special Sunday. As you heard the ringing of the bell and the names were read. Do you remember what the preacher said, what it was called? Remember all? Can you read that, Reese? All Saints Sunday. So it's All Saints Sunday. So I've got this for you. All Saints Sunday. So everyone that has gone on before us, that is in heaven with Jesus is a saint. So my daddy's a saint, and all these people that are church members, they've gone on to heaven, and they are with Jesus right now, and so we're remembering them, and they are included in all the, with the rest of the saints, and they will be waiting on us when we get to heaven, so we will get to see them again. But I have a question for you all. There are some saints that are really well-known, because of the way they lived, like very, very well known. So I wanted to see if you could help me come up with some famous saints. And I want you to, to get you started, I want you to think about what is the name of our church? St. Luke, that's right, St. Luke Church. So St. Luke is a famous saint. What about another one? Can you think of another one? There's one that's associated with hearts. St. Valentine. Valentine. St. Valentine. Anybody else think of another one? I've got a little list here. We've got St. Peter, St. Patrick. Yes, these people all lived such an example 
they lived their life for Jesus, and, and they really helped other people. And so they are some of our famous saints, St. Saint Peter, St. Saint Paul, St. Luke, St. Patrick, and then we came up with St. Valentine, too. All right, are we ready to go back to Children's Church? Let's say a quick prayer before we go, okay? And then Mom and Dad, I will bring them back in time for communion right here to you. All right, let's bow our heads, get our prayer hands, and close our eyes. Dear God, we love you and we thank you, Lord, for today and these children. And we remember our saints, and we know, God, that we will see them again. And we thank you for the gift of everlasting life. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to number 707. 707, Hymn of Promise, and you're invited to stand as we sing together. pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of being your church, of standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. We thank you for receiving them into your eternal glory and presence. And as we seek to live lives worthy of the same, let us continue to worship you with every facet of our life in spirit and in truth. Take what is given, use it, bless it that your name may be lifted up. And it is in your name we pray. Amen.
And our scripture focus this morning is John chapter 5, verses 24 through 27. This is Jesus speaking. He says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death into life. Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when, God, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man." This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your holy and living word, and I pray that you would bring it to life for us today through the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, a few weeks ago, Reverend Robert Wood and I had the opportunity to attend a funeral for a 45-year-old woman. She had battled with cancer for several years, and it finally took its toll. She was a pastor's wife. She was a teacher, an elementary school teacher. She was a mother of two. She was an avid Georgia Southern football fan. She was a friend to many. And her husband is a good friend of ours and a colleague, and so we went to be supportive. The funeral that day was everything you would want a Christian funeral to be. Beforehand, there was lots of fellowship and hugging and sharing of stories As the service started, there was vibrant, powerful, worshipful singing. As the pastors spoke, there was a lot of laughter. There were a lot of tears. There was a deep sense of spirituality and reverence. It was everything you would want a service to be. But there was also this overarching sense of unbelief and sadness. And so the pastor acknowledged that right off the bat. The pastor said, I can't believe we're even here. And he acknowledged that Jesus had not answered the prayer that all of us had been praying. We'd all been praying that Robin would be healed on this earth. We'd all been praying that she would be made strong again so that she could go on teaching and she could be there for her children and for her husband We'd all been praying for that earnestly, but it wasn't to be. And so there was shock and disbelief and sadness. And the pastor acknowledged that. But then the pastor asked a question that rocked us to the core. The pastor said, just because Jesus didn't answer our prayers in the way we wanted him to, Does that make him any less powerful? Does that make him any less God? And the pastor talked about the fact that Jesus represents a beautiful realness. He talked about Lazarus and Mary and Martha and how Jesus allowed Mary and Martha to be themselves at the death of their brother Lazarus. He talked about how Jesus showed up and Mary and Martha lashed out. If you had only been here, Lord, our brother wouldn't have died. Where have you been? Why have you taken so long? He allowed them to be themselves. He allowed them to be real in that moment. But then Jesus also wept with them. And so one of the great powers of Jesus Christ is his ability to be fully present with us wherever we are, 
to be fully present with us in our grief, to be fully present with us in our loss, to be fully present with us in our anger and our frustration and our sadness and all that we're experiencing. That's power that Jesus can be fully there and, be, and allow us to be ourselves with him. But then today we hear Jesus go on to say, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me, that person will have eternal life. They have now crossed from death into life. So there is a beautiful truth of our faith right there. It's not that we are going from life into death. For those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we are going from death into life. Because the scripture says, we who were once dead in our trespasses, we who were dead in our sins, we were dead in our inability to save ourselves, Jesus Christ brought us true life. Jesus brought us eternal life. And so Jesus says, for those who hear my word and believe in me, they cross over from death into life. We essentially die on this earth in that moment that we accept Jesus Christ and we begin to walk in eternal life. That is power beyond our understanding. And then in verse 26, the, word, the verse begins with the word for. For... All life is in the Father, and the Father has given that life to me so that I might give it to you. So in that, we hear the truth that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that we will not have life outside of him. It is his to give. It is his to put into us. He has the only life Jesus Christ has that life and he offers it to us. He is all powerful. He is all God. And therein lies his greatest power. This is beyond our circumstances. It's beyond our understanding. It doesn't rely on us at all. He is all powerful, all knowing because the Father has put life into him and it is his to give. And for all those who call on his name, they have eternal life. Thanks be to God. And so there's an old story about a monastery in a small town. The monastery at one time was thriving. Several monks lived there. It was a vibrant part of the community. But over time, the monastery began to dwindle. The monks died off. Nothing was really happening around the monastery anymore. It dwindled down to just four monks. And they talked among themselves and they decided that it must be time to close the doors. Must be time to let it go. That it had lived its life. And so the abbot, the leader of the monastery, went to visit a local pastor who had a cabin nearby. The pastor often went to this cabin for study and prayer and respite. So the abbot went and met with the pastor at his cabin. They talked for a while and the abbot shared with the pastor that they were going to close the monastery, that there was no life there anymore. The pastor said he understood. The pastor grieved with the abbot. The pastor said, I really don't have any advice. I don't have any answers to give you, but I can certainly pray with you. And so the two men prayed together. And as they closed their prayer, the abbot got ready to leave. And the pastor said, just remember this. Jesus is one of you. So the abbot went back to the monastery. He talked with the other monks. They all decided it was time to close the doors. And the abbot said, well, as I was leaving, the pastor said to me to remember that Jesus is one of us. And so in the weeks ahead each of the monks started to look at each other a little bit differently. Could it be Brother John? Could could Jesus be Brother Joseph? Is Is it you? They started to treat each other with a little more respect. They started to take more pride in the monastery once again. They started to spruce things up and they got together and they prayed. And as they talked about it, they said, 
you know, we could do this and we could try that. And so they opened the monastery up to some community picnics again and people began to gather on the lawn of the monastery. Before they knew it, worship was breaking out at the monastery. Baptisms started happening. Several young men joined the monastery. It began to grow again. It began to come back to life all because they thought Jesus was one of them. What a beautiful, powerful reminder for us today to remember Jesus is one of us. Jesus walks among us. Jesus lives among us. Jesus meets us in the realness of our lives, the messiness of our lives, the sadness, the grief, the pain, the happiness, the celebration. He's there for it all. And he's here with us now. So whatever you might be facing where you're feeling like God's not answering your prayers, remember that Jesus walks with you. Remember that he is beside you. Remember that he understands what you're going through. And I would invite all of us to be real with Jesus because he might just have a miracle on the other side of our honesty. The power of Jesus is available to all of us here and now. And he's calling us from death into eternal life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are all-powerful, all-knowing, always present. And Lord Jesus, forgive us where we forget it or we take for granted that you walk among us. Bless us here and now. Meet us at our deepest needs. Give us the courage to open up and to be brutally honest with you so that you might take every part of our lives and bring eternal life. We thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to come once again to your table. And we ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. We are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper this morning, and so I invite you to follow along in your bulletin. You find there the prayer of invitation and confession, and then turn in your hymnals to page 23, and you'll find the service of Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory Glory to to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. In just a moment, the ushers will guide you to come by the center aisle. We invite you to come and to kneel here at the altar rail. We want you to spend time in prayer, as much time as you would like. And so when you are ready to receive the elements, simply open your hands. We won't bring the bread to you until you have opened your hands. That lets us know you're through praying and you're ready to receive. We'll place the bread in your hand, and then you can partake of the bread, and the cups are already provided. There are some prepackaged cups here close to the front. If you're nervous about that or if you need gluten-free, those are packaged there at the front. But please come by the center aisle, stay as long as you'd like, and then return by the outside aisles to your seats. This is the table of the Lord. It's open to everyone who would receive these elements of God's grace. So as you are led, won't you come?
Please turn in your hymnals to number 384. We'll sing the first and last stanza, stanzas one and four of Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, and you're invited to stand as we sing together. We go now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and may God bless you and grant you his power today and forevermore. <laughs> 